Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Killer Author Club. Tonight, we have two killer guests, Jeffrey Deaver and Isabella Maldonado, joining us to talk about their co-authored thriller, Fatal Intrusion. We have tons to talk about, so grab your cocktail and your list of questions for our guests, and we will see you on the flip side. Welcome to the Killer Author Club. Three best-selling authors talking about kill it of the fictional kind, with the best thriller and suspense authors in the business. Killer conversations, killer cocktails, and killer guests with your hosts, Kimberly Bell, Heather Gutenkopf, and Kara Ruda. This is the Killer Author Club. Hello, everyone. Welcome to all our new members, and we have a bunch of them. It's been so much fun to see how our, our, our Facebook group has been growing, our YouTube channel, and also our podcast numbers. Very excited about that. So thank you all for your support. And for all your the new members, we are so glad you're here. Welcome to the club. I'm Killer Heather Goodenkoff. I'm Killer Kimberly Bell. And I'm Killer Kara Ruda. And tonight, we have two killers for the price of one. Both Jeffrey Deaver and Isabella Maldonado are here with us tonight talking about their new thriller, Fatal Intrusion. Like always, we have tons of killer fun planned for you tonight. So speaking of fun, how would you like some fun in your inbox? Be the first to know about our upcoming guests, killer breaking news, and more in our month monthly newsletter. Only once a month, we promise. No spam. Sign up today at killerauthorclub.com. Also, if you can't get enough of our shows, check out our Killer Postmortem, otherwise known as the After Show, which is exclusive to the podcast. Tonight's show will be available on your favorite podcasting app starting on Friday. Links to follow and download on KillerAuthorClub.com. Kimberly. Yes. Jeffrey Deaver is the award-winning number one international and New York Times best-selling author of the Lincoln Rhyme, Coulter Shaw, and Catherine Dance series, among many others. A former journalist, folk singer, oh, I want to hear that, and attorney, he was born outside Chicago and has a Bachelor of Journalism degree from the University of Missouri and a law degree from Fordham University. He was recently named a Grand Master of Mystery Writers of America, whose ranks include Agatha Christie, Elmer Leonard, and Mickey Spillane. Jeffrey Deaver lives in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, around the corner, and Orlando, Florida, and you can find more about him at jeffreydeaver.com. Wall Street Journal bestselling author Isabella Maldonado wore a gun and a badge in real life before turning to crime writing. A graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico and the first Latina to attain the rank of captain in the Fairfax County Police Department just outside of D.C., she uses her law enforcement background to bring a realistic edge to her writing and how, like the best-selling FBI special agent Nina Guerrero series soon to be a Netflix feature film starring Jennifer Lopez, the award-winning Detective Veranda Cruz series, and the Agent Daniela Danny Vega series. Her books are published in 24 languages. Isabella lives in Phoenix and Lakeside, both in Arizona, and more at IsabellaMoldonado.com. Congrats to both of you on a fantastic read, and welcome to the Killer Author Club. Oh, thank you. It's so good to be with all you killers. <laughs> <laughs> love what you did there. <laughs> yeah, we love it. And we have so many questions about fatal intrusion, uh, but can you start with giving us just a brief little blurb about what the book is about? Um, want me to jump in first, Isabel, and we can uh, go from there. Um, the um, fatal intrusion. Um, a The reason I'm hesitating is that when we... Um, created the book, we um, followed our own personal styles of writing thrillers, which is surprise, 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 twist, 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 twist. So I cannot say a lot about Fatal Intrusion, but I can tell you that an unlikely pair, an agent with uh, the Department of Homeland Security's um, uh, Security and Homeland Security Investigations Division, like the police department of uh, DHS, teams up with kind of a nerdy uh, computer guy to track down a serial killer 
uh, prowling the streets of uh, Los Angeles and Southern California. And I have to come to a complete stop, not because my feed is bad, but because if I told you any more, it would start to give away the many surprises. Nothing is quite what it seems to be. It's a roller coaster of a book that takes place over literally a day, day and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I would that's what I would put it down to. Well, we loved it. And guys, get chatty and start dropping your questions in the comments for us to ask of tonight's guests. But first, let's talk about this episode's special drinks. That's right. There are two of them. Um, each of our guests has one to share. That's right. Okay. So the killers love our cocktails and mocktails. So every episode, we ask our killer guests to come equipped with a favorite. And recipes for tonight's drinks and all the killer cocktails can be found on our website, killerauthorclub.com. Isabella, you chose a margarita as your special drink. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us yeah. why? Well, when I moved out from the D.C. area out to Phoenix in Arizona, it was like, um, yeah, margaritas were definitely the thing that everybody was drinking. And they actually have something out here called a prickly pear margarita mm. that has the essence of the prickly pear cactus. I've never had it anywhere else. Um, so it is, it's kind of unique. But um, the other thing I did, too, with this particular uh, margar margarita, it's um, from Casa del Sol, which is a woman-owned, all Latina-owned um, tequila. It's a smooth sipping tequila uh, made by um, Eva, Eva Longoria. So um, that is actually kind of, I, I just thought that was really it's, it's fascinating, a, a woman-owned tequila. Um, so I had to embrace that and give it a shot, and I loved it. Oh, good. That's great. I know. I wish you could cheers with us, but she yes. has been on tour and has peanuts and water. So cheers. That's right. Anyway, thank you for that. Okay, and Jeffrey, you chose a tequila and bourbon old-fashioned. What do you love about this drink? Well, it's got a lot of alcohol in it. <laughs> and uh, the reason I picked this, it is an unlikely combination. Now, an old fashioned is one of my uh, favorite drinks. Uh, I love that. But I thought it was sort of an homage to our two uh, characters, Carmen Sanchez and uh, Jake Heron in the books. Now, Jake is the nerd I was referring to earlier. And um, he's a hacker, former hacker. Now, hackers, I learned in my research, um, kind of shun alcohol, anything that makes them a little drowsy or a little off their game, uh, they tend to um, avoid. Um, so in, in fact, in Fatal Attrition, Jake um, has one drink and he doesn't even get to drink it for reasons that you'll see in the book. And it turned out to be Moe Chandon uh, Champagne, uh, which is probably not gonna get a hacker into too much trouble. I digress a bit, but I thought that would be a good combination, the tequila and the, um, I use Crown Royal uh, and no, I'm not getting paid for this. Uh, but just for the record, there we have a little crown royal. Oh, that'll be empty by the time we finish. But <laughs> that's, that, anyway, that's why I, I picked that uh, strange that's one. Great. The Killer Author Club enjoys that. So cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Look at this. Michelle Lynn says that Ava was in, Ava Longoria was in Murders in the Building and plugged her tequila in an episode. Oh, oh wow. Well, I, I can tell you, I've tasted it's delicious. So, <laughs> there you go. This okay, is almost cool. like Murders in the Building. You know, Killer <laughs> you know what, Isabel, we have not actually been approached for product placement yet, but I think That's we true. should actually pursue mean. that. I think yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. Yes, you can send them this clip where you're not drinking it, but you were talking yes, about I know, it. sadly, because, yeah, I, I so everyone knows I would, except I just, I got off the plane just a little while ago. So I have, um, I have bottled water and I have some peanuts and that is what I have. Sad. <laughs> yes, that's a glorious author um, on Twitter yeah. life. The, the book tour. Yeah, actually, Jeff and I are kind of we're on a, a little tour together right now. So I made it into Manhattan. I'm, he I'm here now. Jeff will be flying in tomorrow. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Wow. So much fun to get the dynamic duo in the same place together to talk yes. about this wonderful book. Uh, so the killers, we started the Killer Author Club two years ago so that readers like you can interact with some of the best suspense and thriller writers in the business. Our fall lineup includes superstars like Paula Hawkins, Geneva Rose, 
Patricia Cornwell. That's right. We're with besties with Patricia now, and she's returning to the Killer Author Club in November. Once was not enough for her and Benjamin Stevenson. And there's so many more. So for dates, times, past episodes, et cetera, surf to killerauthorclub.com. But tonight we're here to talk all about Fatal Intrusion, the first book in the Sanchez and Heron thriller series, co-authored by our guests, Jeffrey Deaver and Isabella Maldonado. And it's gotten rave reviews. Library Journal says Deaver's interest in social media and Maldonado's law enforcement background blend well in this fast paced crime novel. Booklist says this novel is captivating, detail driven, and int intentionally misguiding until the final reveal. Although left on somewhat of a cliffhanger, this novel can be read as a standalone book. And Midwest Book Review says Fatal Intrusion co authors D Jeffrey Deaver and Maldonado have created a whodunit mystery that rises to the level of an extraordinary literary elegance. So, again, wow. rave reviews, congratulations. Obviously, you two are exceptionally, exceptionally talented power killing duo. Now, what we need to know is the answer to this question When do you kill? Do we we jump in and answer? <laughs> yes, please. All right, I'll tell you. How, how, and I'm being a little facetious, but there's a, a bit of seriousness to this. When do I kill? Uh, I'm a writer, so I enjoy anything that will uh, distract me from writing. Right? Mm -hmm. Not to write. Isn't that the truth? So the best way to distract yourself: uh, the internet, and specifically, in my case, YouTube, and more specifically. More specifically yet, watching uh, videos of baby goats in pajamas frolicking. <laughs> I love it. If you've never seen these guys, they are adorable. And um, so I wake up one morning and the uh, the cable's out and I'm in a panic because I have to write. Oh, no. Imagine that. I can't see my baby goats to distract me. And I call the <laughs> company. I call the cable company and say, don't worry, Mr. D. We'll have somebody there at 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. And, of course, 8 o'clock comes and 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. They don't show up until four o'clock and then they say, oh, well, we can't work on this cable box. Uh, I'm sorry. Those are the days when I want to kill. Now, <laughs> now what, what's the serious part uh, uh, about that? Because um, I think I can speak for Isabella too. When we look for uh, scenes to write about in the book, we want scenes that everybody can relate to. Now, maybe not everybody watches baby goats in pajamas and gets angry when they don't turn out, uh, the, the videos don't turn out. But, you know, we want to kind of strike fear into the hearts of people through everyday ordinary things. And uh, so basically, um, that's my answer to when I kill. Mm, I love it. Isabella? Well, for me, it's um, actually it was kind of funny because someone had had, you know, asked before. And I know we're going to get into the idea of kind of how we actually write together. And maybe this will be part of the, the segue to that. Um, but on the days where and, and, you know, the book has many different kinds of scenes. So on the days where there is a scene that involves a murder, um, those are the days that if I'm feeling shooty and stabby, those are the days where I want to write those scenes. And um, so that those are the days when I want to kill. It depends on what's going on. <laughs> so are those did like bad days? Did you know those, those words, two of my favorite words, which I stole from Isabella, although I give her credit for it, shooty and stabby, two of the best <laughs> words. Yeah, so what makes you feel shooty and stabby? Is that a good day? Oh, or my bad? God. Oh, it's a, uh, well, for me, it's, if anything annoys me, you know, um, anything can set me off. But the good thing is, because we're killer authors, we can just get it on the page. And, you know, so it prevents us from climbing up on a high tower and starting to pick people off. Because we can just do it on the page. It's all good. <laughs> Because how, many, how many reviewers can you get in your crosshairs anyway? It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's a little <laughs> literal killing. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I like that shooty and stabby though. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. So why don't we segue into how you guys got started as a writing duo? Can we go there? Lots of questions in the comments about this. Do you want to jump okay. in that one, Isabella? Okay, sure. Um, so Jeff and I first met back in 2018 in Chicago, of all places. They have a um, a writers' conference called. Um, well, I guess it goes to different cities, but at this point, it was Murder and Mayhem in Chicago. 
And it was for both um, writers to, you know, and, and aspiring writers also as well. So it's a pretty good sized conference. And that's where we first met. I was there, you know, on a panel and speaking and Jeff was obviously as well, but we'd never met, but we were hanging around in the green room together um, with Gilly and Flynn. Mm. And so it was the three of us. And so just started chit chatting. And then as, as writers will do, we started, especially thriller writers, we all started joking about, you know, would it be fun to all, all three of us kind of make a story together and what kind of murder would it be? And, um, we decided, I don't know, we were feeling particularly silly. There was not alcohol involved yet because it was earlier in the day. But even without that, we still figured out that, well, I don't know, maybe we could figure out how there would be this sort of a mafia boss in diapers, a little baby, like a little baby mafia boss. And um, we just kept cracking each other up and making jokes about it and everything. And that's kind of when I really got to appreciate Jeff's sense of humor. And um, obviously, I guess he thought my jokes were funny. And I remember making some sort of comment about the baby's diaper wasn't the only thing that was loaded. And um, <laughs> it was just, uh, you know, it was, we, we entertained each other. And then also um, later we bumped into each other again at Thriller Fest in New York. And um, at that point, that was in, I think that was like 2019, I think. And then I asked him to blurb my one of my books and so that kind of gave him a chance to read my books. And I think that was when we both realized that we write very similarly. Mm -hmm. We write and, you know, and Jeff can go more into exactly what that means, but we have a very similar writing style that would mesh and complement each other. And so then we met again in Scottsdale when he was out um, on tour and then we went out, um, you know, just sort of talking together after his signing. And it was just like, you know what, we should, we should stop joking about it and actually do it. Yeah. Love it. So do you each take a character or do you flip back and forth chapter wise? How do you do the logistics of the actual writing and who writes what? Um, sure, it's a, it's a process. I mean, you know, writing books is like building an airplane or a car. It's it's a complicated uh, a project. Um, and I'll I'll give you kind of the schematic of how we we uh, we did it, and you know maybe then hand off to uh, Isabella. But we um, uh, we come up with a, a general outline. And, oh, and by the way, this is fifty fifty. I say it's oxymoronically a hundred percent fifty fifty. You know, so <laughs> we both did we both did exactly the same amount of work on the book and. Um, and, and, and so on. Uh, so it's, um, uh, I think there's like co-writing, co-authoring, this is purely co-authoring. And so together we came up with an outline going back and forth, three, four hour phone calls, uh, emails back and forth, not living in the same area, but nowadays, you know, after COVID, of course you can do so much remotely and uh, come up with a rough outline and refine, refine, refine. And we ended up in fatal intrusion uh, with about uh, 62 or 63 chapters to begin with. And um, then uh, we write from, and you out uh, there, writers might be interested to know that our, our approach is to write from third person, a close point of view, past tense. And um, that is because we do have the twists and turns and uh, you can have legitimately unreliable narrators because you're in somebody else's point of view. If you write from the first person all the time, you kind of have to cheat if you're going to do unreliable narrator. But we didn't do that because we like the surprises and twists and turns. So um, what happened was we tended to break it down into each of our main characters having a, a chapter and then the bad guy or guys or gals uh, or people, notice how I'm hedging there, uh, having a, um, a chapters of their own. And we would uh, we would swap, and Isabella wrote, you know, primarily from the uh, point of view of Carmen Sanchez. I wrote primarily from the point of view of Jay Karen, but we swapped off, and mm -hmm. uh, I wrote some from her point of view. She wrote some from his point of view, and then we um, um, we uh, did the editing, the merciless editing, and 
our rule is, and we can go into this a, a, a little bit more, and Isabel is a little more articulate about it than I am, but basically it's it's no holds barred. We, we edited uh, the hell out of each other's work because our goal was not ego. Our goal was to create the best product we could. And, uh, you know, uh, hour after hour after hour of revising and editing and so forth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, fine. And Isabella, so you primarily wrote from Carmen's point of view, of course, with, mm -hmm. with input from, from Jeffrey, but you have a background in law enforcement. So how did that inform the character of Carmen? It, it really informs it quite a lot. Um, I, I was never, um, Carmen is an agent with Homeland Security as part of HSI, Homeland Security Investigations. So I never did that, but certainly did a ton of research and, you know, with law enforcement contacts and other things to try to make it authentic, um, as I do. I mean, I've written about NYPD and Phoenix PD and the FBI. And I mean, I write a lot of law enforcement and different kinds of law enforcement. So I try to be very um, true to that and true to each agency's own um, culture because every law enforcement agency has its own culture and you need to respect that. And so, yeah, it, it took a lot of work to do that. And um, I, I felt really, I felt good about after it was, it was finished. Now, obviously it's a thriller, so I'm gonna take more liberties. I mean, truly it, um, she gets away with more, <laughs> but it has to be exciting, right? You can't have her sitting at her desk type or um, keyboarding in a, a, a report, that's boring. Right. And actually, that's a source of um, uh, the, uh, the the tension within the, the book itself, because what we've done in Fatal Intrusion, without giving too much away, is we have multiple plots of, um, um, you know, excitement. And one is, of course, the core crime, the uh, I'm winking now, uh, the uh, serial killer, because there is a serial killer, but there's a little more truth than that. That's the core crime. And then we have uh, the... the um, I would call it the soap opera tension uh, because we learn that um, Carmen and Selena, her sisters, their father uh, died uh, not too long ago. And that created a big uh, rift between the, the sisters. I won't say anything more about that, but that's you know, a wonderful soap opera element. But then of course we can't let Jake and, uh, and Carmen get away scot-free. And so they have a tension too. I won't say anything about whether it's romantic tension or not. You have to buy the book to find that out. But I will say that uh, he was a former black hat hacker. That's a bad guy hacker. Now he's helping the good guys, but he still has a little bit of that black hatness about him. And Carmen, of course, is a sworn law enforcer. And uh, he says, ah, we'll worry about the rules later. And she says, no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. So this is a continual theme between them. And it creates, uh, you know, some, some wonderful uh, scenes where they, uh, you know, kind of reassess their approach to solving these these terrible crimes. And it sounds like you guys love these characters. Or do you have like mm -hmm. a whole series that's coming with them? Or I know you said you're working on your next book with them. Yeah, book book two. We are feverishly writing it right now. It uh, will be up for sale um, in September, and it is called The Grief Artist, and it's already up for pre order. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll have more to say. Mm -hmm. That's a worry. We, have, you know, we we can kind of take it easy because uh, we we have uh, what four days until it's due. It's four or five oh days. Yeah. yeah, a million years away. Yeah, so we're, we're good. And a tour to tour to. Uh, there, yeah, there is there yeah. is that. There, there is that. But it's amazing, and we're. I mean, congratulations to both yeah. of you guys. It's such yeah. a huge success. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we also have to talk about the spider because the spider was really a scary, scary <laughs> um, killer. Um, oh. He talks about this thing called the push, like his compulsion mm -hmm. or urge to hurt others. What kind of research did you do into to get into like his head? Uh, well, I mean, in, in, in my case, um, you know, I, I kind of I like um the villains. I probably enjoy writing the villains more than anything. And uh, I didn't really do a lot of 
uh, research, I think Isabella Moy, and actually having had her background, I know she's interviewed and talked to people who have that kind of uh, psychosis, um, but I did a little more of the research into the spiders. Now, don't be afraid. Spiders actually come across pretty well in the, the I mean, there are some actual spiders, but it's not, they're not creepy spiders. They're kind of interesting spiders. I, I think in this, the, our villain kind of studies them and he's interested in them. But uh, as far as the, the uh, you know, the weird psychological stuff, Isabella, do you want to talk about that more than I could? Well, um, as far as like how to make his personality, I mean, I, I draw from some of the experiences that I've had. Um, and part of that does come from training that I got at the FBI National Academy when I was there. Um, and then on top of it, in my regular law enforcement career, interviewing with people. And also, I was a hostage negotiator on top of that. Mm -hmm. So um, just I've studied tons of psychology, especially you know, back in the dark ages, they used to, when I was going to college, they, you know, back in the eighties, they called it deviant psychology. They don't call it that anymore. Um, they don't call it abnormal psych either. They, they just don't, but, but that was the kind of, that was kind of like a special field where it's really kind of criminology, I think is what they call it now. And it sort of evolved into that, but, but learning what makes people tick because your villains have to be three dimensional, just like your main characters do. No one wants a mustache twisting baddie. Everyone wants um, someone who, you know, why do they do what they do? And I think especially with um, with serial killer stories, people um, just want to understand what went wrong to make someone go into doing stuff like that. So that's the that's always the the backstory that I'm fascinated with with telling as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, Kimberly. Yes, but yeah, you know. and I hope you guys were paying attention to that answer because Jeff and Isabella are giving away two copies of Fatal Intrusion tonight to U.S. viewers. Doesn't matter if you're watching us on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram or YouTube. We scour the comments everywhere we stream, but please make sure to shout out where you're from for a chance to win one of the two books, um, The Killer... Carmen and Jake are hunting is known as the spider. Why? That's a tough one, you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, good luck, everybody. All right, the killers are big fans of independent booksellers and want to support them in any way we can, which is why we ask every author to tell us their favorite. Jeff and Isabella have each chosen a store to highlight tonight. So Jeff has chosen Quail Ridge in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jeff, can you tell us why? Uh, yes, because um, uh, Quail Ridge in, uh, it's in Raleigh, North Carolina is, I can't quite walk there, but it's a very easy drive. And I've had some wonderful, wonderful events there. Uh, not only have I been invited to uh, do my own presentation there, but I've been asked to uh, interview people like uh, Harlan Coben and um, uh, Scott Turow, so I serve as sort of a moderator, which is also very fun, yeah. and uh, it's a just a wonderful, um, uh, you know, and it's a it's a hangout place. And you know, they don't have at least they didn't when I last looked, coffee and those like cappuccino machines that always start to make cappuccino when you start to give your speech. You know, frankly, it's quite quite irritating, but they don't do that. People just hang out there. They talk books and uh, sit in the chairs and share books, and it's great fun. Sounds like it. That sounds amazing. And Isabella, you chose the famous poison pen in Scottsdale. Can you tell us why you love that store? They were, um, I was, I've loved that store for years. The owner, Barbara Peters, um, has, she's owned that store for decades and it, it's just been such an institution. And one of the things I, I love about it is from the time of my very, very first book that I ever wrote, I had my very first launch event there and I've had a launch event there for every book ever since then. And as a matter of fact, when Jeff and I launched um, Fatal Intrusion together, we were there. That's where we, we launched it together. And um, it was, it was really cool because that's, it was after Jeff's event there that we decided to go ahead and write together. So it came full circle. Mm -hmm. So it's a very special place. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Awesome. All right. And we'll be dropping the link to Fatal Intrusion in the comments so you guys can order it along with any others on your wish list from Poison Pen 
or quail ridge. So go ahead and order that if you'd like to. And yeah. Heather. Yeah, and obviously the killers love to read and the Killer Author Club is the place to share your love for fabulous books. So while you're there, post pictures, write reviews, ask for recommendations and give yours. We love it when our TBR cups runneth over, which is why we want to ask Jeff and Isabella, what are you currently reading? You want to break the news or should I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. I'll break the news. Um, so Jeff and I, because we are feverishly working toward our deadline, our our deadline um, for this, the grief artist book two is November 1st. And we are actively on tour right now. So, you know, I'll be writing here in my hotel room. Jeff's going to be writing on the airplane as he's flying out here we're we're writing frantically so we don't have much time to read um and i know for me i tend to not read fiction when i am in the throes of writing and i'm close to a deadline i will i will listen to nonfiction sometimes like maybe on an audiobook as i'm running around doing things but after i'm done that'll be the first opportunity to actually read something <laughs> yeah that's amazing well, we sure appreciate your sacrifice for us, <laughs> as reader. So thank you for for going that so you can get your book done on time, and so we'll we'll be able to enjoy that. So thank you. And speaking of amazing reads, tonight we have a Killer Author Club alumni to celebrate. Uh, so a great writer knows when to deliver a juicy block plot twist, but for one author, the biggest twist of all is her own murder. A very bad thing is a must read that will captivate you from the start and will keep you reading until the last page. And JT's book comes out November 1st. And we'll drop the link to that in the comment section. Right. And if that's not enough, we have two other new releases to add to your toppling TBR First, check out Arizona Triangle by Sydney Graves in the vein of the best-selling California noirs of Sue Grafton and Sarah Grant, a whodunit about loyalty, love, and the legacy of trauma featuring a hard-boiled queer private eye whose latest case takes her deep into her own complicated past. And we also have Precipice by Robert Harris. With his new historical thriller, Precipice, Robert Harris mixes fact with fiction, England on the brink of World War I, and the real-life affair between the prime minister and a young socialite, which he uses to create a propulsive literary tour de force. Sydney is giving away three copies of Arizona Triangle and Robert three copies of Precipice, all to lucky U.S. viewers. So drop a comment if you'd like to be entered for either of these books and remember to tell us where you're from. Good luck. <laughs> and don't forget to check out the killer's latest books. That's right. Heather's latest. Everyone is watching is Big Brother meets Clue in a reality show gone very wrong. And Kara's latest, the second Mrs. Strom is set in Paris and has the tagline, a successful marriage is built on lies. So go ahead and pre-order the next in the series, What the Nanny Saw, out in November. Very soon. Very soon. And Paris is always a good idea. And so is Kimberly's The Paris Widow, about a dream vacation gone horribly, horribly wrong. All right, you guys, membership has its privileges. So if you're on Facebook, check out our private members only group called the Killer Author Club, where all the killer magic is found, giveaways and much, much more. Every episode, we choose one member to win a piece of swag, a t-shirt, mug, candle, totes, hat, all of which can be found if you'd like to buy your own at killerauthorclub.com. Tonight's winner is Deborah Pitt Parker. So congratulations, and please send one of us killers your address, and we'll send some swag your way. And if you would like to throw your hat in the ring to win some swag, all you have to do is become a member of the Facebook group. And we're dropping the link in the comments just so you have it really right in front of you. <laughs> so, Jeff and Isabella, we have some very, very good news for you. Oh. You have survived <laughs> killer author. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, one of the few uh, 
uh, who, who survived the club. We are so glad that you were able to, to join us tonight. Um, we will send you that badge so you can print it out and hang it oh, on the wall with really? all your other accolades, you know, right yeah. up there with those. Oh, fun. Uh, okay. But we, we sure, sure enjoyed having you here with us tonight. So thank you so much for being here. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. And can you both tell us where readers can find you? Uh, well, I, the best uh, best place is uh, jeffreydeaver.com. Um, and you will learn far more about me than you ever wanted to know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that kind of links to this other stuff. I think there's something called Facebook out there that may not be Facebook anymore. Something called Twitter that may not be Twitter anymore. It might be X or might be something else. You can tell how involved I personally am in social media. But jeffreydeaver.com will get you where you want to go. How's that? Yes, and Isabella, where can we find you? The same, same thing, basically, isabellamaldonado.com. That's really, that, that's a good starting place because it just has links to everywhere. And you can um, you can learn about my law enforcement background if, if you find those sorts of things interesting um, and other things about, about me and then appearances and things like that. And actually, for anyone who is in the New York area, so Jeff and I will, as we mentioned, we're going to be at the Mysterious Bookshop tomorrow evening um, at 6. And then we're going to be up in New Bedford. And then after that, we're going to be in Boston for the Boston Festival of Books. So for anyone in any of those cities, we'll be together. And, and that will kind of be the official end of our little book tour together. So after that, it's just writing. <laughs> <laughs> words, words, words. Work, work, work. Well, go get your book signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. That does it for tonight's episode. Thank you to everyone for tuning in and make sure to mark your calendars for the one and only Paula Hawkins, who will be joining us next week, one week from today, October 29th, same day, but at a very special time, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And we'll be talking about her newest thriller, The Blue Hour. Mm. In the meantime, find us wasting entirely too much time on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all the places for the information you need, links, times, upcoming schedule, past episodes, recipes, and merch. Surf to killerauthorclub.com. Thanks for being part of the club. That does it for tonight's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to catch our next show live, we're every other Tuesday night on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For times, upcoming schedule, and to catch up on past episodes, visit us at killerauthorclub.com. Happy reading. Now get on out there and kill that TBR.